Good afternoon and thank you for tuning in for another Pineapple Bytes video training session. In this video we're going to review and discuss how to create an item in Aloha Manager. First thing you're going to want to do is go to Maintenance, Menu, Items. This is going to bring up your main item screen. Now from here you can click on this down arrow located up on the drop down. That's going to give you a full list of every item number along with its long name and sales retail category that's in the database currently. Uh, some customers may have uh, numbers that do not have anything populated in the long name. That is because when the database was originally built, extra items were left blank to make it easier to program additional items in the future. Uh, as well as you may notice that your items may be bulked in number ranges, so 1,000 might be appetizers, uh, and then every number 1,000 is typically an app, and then 1,100 might be seafood, everything under there is seafood. So you can go in and find a, an item that hasn't been populated with a long name, and you can create your new item in there. In this particular video, there is no blank items, so when we create a new item, we'll be physically having to create an actual new item number uh, that hasn't been made in the database. So the first thing we're going to want to do is over on the right-hand side, you have a new button. We're going to go ahead and click this. Aloha Manager is automatically going to populate the number field with the first number that's available to be able to be used in the database. You don't have to choose this number. So what you can do on the right hand side, you can hit these three little dots. You have some different options you can pick from here. First unassigned number, first unassigned number following for, this number so you can manually type in a number here. It's going to show you on the bottom here on the screen every item number that's currently been used. So if we look for one that hasn't been used yet, you can see here it kind of goes to, uh, let me take a look here. So 1,079, we know there's not a 1,080, so we'll just go ahead and type in 1,080 here and hit OK. You're going to notice it's going to populate that number field now with the new number that we typed in. First thing you're going to want to fill out is the short name. Now the short name is the text that's going to be displayed on the actual button that the servers and bartenders will be using to ring in the item on the front of host terminals. So we'll just go ahead and create something here. And you'll notice after you create the short name, if you go ahead and hit enter, it's automatically going to populate your chit name and your long name with the same information that you put in for the short name. This is to kind of speed up the programming. Uh, you may not be able to do this every time because the short name and the chit name, you don't have as many characters to be able to use for those fields, so you may have to abbreviate them. Uh, you typically want your long name to be the full correct spelling, no abbreviations, as a long name is what's going to print out on the customer's guest check. You want to make that as easy as is to read and not confusing for the guest. So you want to make sure that you kind of have that spelled out correctly. The chit name, of course, is, uh, is the, the item name that prints on the chit, that prints to a remote printer. So that'd be the kitchen printer chit or a bartender chit. Another option that you can do under the short name is if you take away the space between two words and you put a backslash lowercase n, what this does is it actually tells the system to put chicken on the first line and then put Caesar underneath of it um, on the actual button that's on the front of host terminal. My rule of thumb generally is if it's two words, I'll use the backslash n. You, it just makes it look a little cleaner and easier to read on the terminals. You're also going to want to make sure that you don't use the backslash n in the chit name or the long name because that code is only meant for the short name. So if you put it in the chit name and the long name, it will physically print on the piece of paper uh, under the chit name and the long name. So you only want to use that backslash n for short name. Next thing we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to make sure that the tax group is set correctly on this item. In this particular instance, we're going to set tax group 1. Most systems are usually set up with only one tax group, which would be HST. Um, you do have additional tax groups you can create. We won't discuss those in this video, but depending on what tax group you do have set up, you may have ones for 
HST inclusive. You may have one set up for no tax. You're just going to want to make sure that you have the appropriate one assigned to that item. Next thing you're going to want to do here is you see sales or retail category. It's got a red X here. That means that this is mandatory. This field has to be filled out in order for you to actually save this item in the database. So what you're going to do here is you're going to hit this drop down. And you're going to pick the appropriate sales category that the sales revenue should be reported under when you do your sales summary. So when you do your sales summary, you'll have your, your sales categories listed. So food, uh, non-alcoholic beverages, depending on what you have set up. You want to make sure that the item you are creating, you associate to, to the proper sales category. So when that item is sold, the dollar value will report under that sales category for your sales summary. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your modifier tab. The modifier tab is where you associate particular modifier groups to an item that you're creating. So for in, an example of this would be if you're creating, let's say, a breakfast combo. You're going to want to make sure you assign a couple different modifier groups to those. Like First off, you would assign the egg modifier group, so the choice of eggs would pop up when ringing in the item, uh, as well as the choice of toast, and then, of course, the choice of meat. Um, depending on the order that you put them, so you see here you have modifiers 1 through 10, depending on the order you put these in will be how they flow when the server bartender is ringing it in on the front terminal. So you're going to want to make sure that when you're associating your modifiers to this item, you're going to want to make sure that you put it in an appropriate order that makes sense for when they're actually ringing it in, not only and, and when they're asking the customer the questions on what they actually want for their meal. It's also important, too, because it also is how it's organized on the kitchen chit. So you want to make sure it makes sense the way it's laid out when they actually order that item. We won't cover modifiers in this video. We'll cover how to set up modifiers and modifier groups in another video. So for this instance, we can just go in and we'll just pick a couple modifier groups, just generic ones. Then you want to make sure you go to your pricing tab. Now, what the pricing tab is used for is if you're doing item level pricing. There's two different ways to price items in Aloha. You can use item level pricing and you can use button level pricing. We recommend always using item level pricing as it works with real-time updates and as well it works with being able to use price change events which make things really easy to do change prices on the fly. So what you're going to want to do here is in the default price, this is where you put the price of your item pre-tax. So we'll type that in there. We'll go ahead and hit save. You can see I do have real-time updates enabled. So if I hit yes on this, it will automatically update the terminals right away. Next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to need to make sure that the item routing of where this item is printing to is set correctly. To do that, you'll go to Maintenance, Menu, Item Routing. Since this was a brand new item, you can see over on the left-hand side, this is a box that I have all available items that haven't been assigned to print anywhere. You can see here my newly assigned item, which I created, was Chicken Caesar. If you've already created an item when you first went and created your item and you used a blank item that was already created and you just kind of populated the names, chances are it's automatically already included over on the right hand side and you'll just want to verify that the printer group is set correctly on that item. If you're creating one like me in this video and you're creating a brand new actual item, then it's going to be on the available and you're going to have to go in and highlight it, click the double arrows to move it over to the included section. And then you're going to want to go ahead and pick the appropriate printer group that needs to be assigned to that item. So Chicken Caesar, I want that to print to my food printer group. And in that printer group is my kitchen printer. So when the Chicken Caesar is ordered, it's going to look to see, okay, what printer group is assigned to that item. And then what printers are in that printer group and send that item to those particular printers. So you're always going to want to make sure that you set up your item routing after you've created an item. I'm going to go ahead and save on that. We can hit yes to the real-time update as well. The next thing we'll do is if you are tracking your item costs, we're going to associate a cost to this item. You go to Maintenance, Menu, Item Costs. And from here you can see it's not included. It's over on the left, so we're going to highlight it and move it over to the right. We're going to go ahead and put our cost of the actual item in here. And we're going to hit Save. 
new real time update. I always recommend trying to put in costs of your item if if you can. That way, when you're viewing product mix reports and certain reports on Aloha Manager, you'll be able to see an actual net profit on your your items that you're selling. The next thing you're going to want to make sure is you're going to want to make sure that the particular item that you just created is in the all items category. The all items is a non-sales category that's created when your database is first configured that gets attached to certain things like miscellaneous percentage comp, miscellaneous dollar per, uh, comps. So you're going to want to make sure that you have that item in that category or else when an employee goes to do a, a comp or a discount on a particular item, if that's not included in that all items category and that all items category is attached to eligible items for the comp, they will not be able to do the discount because that item is not included. To do that, you're going to go to maintenance, menu, categories. If you hit this drop down, you're going to go and look for the all items general category. Click on your items tab, find your item that you newly created over here on the left. Generally, there should be nothing over here on the left. You want to make sure all your items that you create are always put in this all items category. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to put all these guys in here because they shouldn't be over here. So if you click on the first one, then you hold shift on your keyboard. And you keep holding it down and you click on the last one. It will highlight every single item. So we're going to hit the double arrows here and it's going to move them all over. Now I'm going to just going to go down and find that item that I created. You can see here, Chicken Caesar is now included in this all items category. From then we're going to hit save. And that's everything to do with creating an item in Aloha Manager. The next video we will discuss how to take that item and put it on a sub menu panel so it can be ordered from the front of host terminals. Thank you for tuning in and I hope this video helped.